Oh, hi everyone. Um, very happy to welcome you all to our webinar today. We are going to be discussing all things MSc Medical Bioscience. So you've been invited to this as either an applicant or an offer holder to this programme for September 2023 start. Um, we have Frances McInnes here. She Hi. will be talking you through the programme and answering any questions you have in relation to the programme itself. If you have any general GCU inquiries, anything to do with scholarships, funding, um, accommodation, anything at all like that, um, my name is Hannah Davis and I am the marketing manager for the School of Health and Life Sciences and will do my best to answer those queries for you. Um, if you have any questions throughout, please feel free to just pop them in the chat box to the right and we will do our best to answer them. And obviously after Frances delivers her um, short presentation here, there will be an opportunity for Q&A following that. So over to you, Frances. Um, again, any questions, just let us know throughout. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Hannah. Um, I'm hopeful that everybody can um, hear me okay. Um, it's lovely to be here today and to welcome you all to this sort of just brief overview, as Hannah says, of the programme. Um, I'm going to introduce myself just so that you know who I am and in what context I'm here today. Um, so my name is Frances McInnes. I am an advisor on the programme. I also teach on the programme. I teach one of the modules in trimester A and I'll go over the ins and outs of the, the modules um, shortly. But I, I have a kind of pastoral care and support role um, on the MSc programme. And, you know, I can be a point of contact um, for you to help you with anything that you might need in terms of um firming up your application process, any information that you might need from, from this end. Sometimes I, I also feel that, you know, when you are applying to a university, particularly when you're abroad, you know, you send an, uh, an email or a communication to somebody and maybe nobody's getting back to you. Um, so you can make me a point of contact and I can help to chase uh, up people. Um, just to say that it is the summer here at the moment and I will be taking some holidays and I'll let you know about that shortly. But I will do my very best to try and put you in touch with the right person to get answers as quickly as, as possible. So I, I work in the Department um, of Biological and Biomedical Sciences of which the MSc Medical Bioscience is um, situated. I'm a senior lecturer here, but as I say, I'm the module leader for the M Skills module um, in trimester A, and I also teach on the research skills for medical bioscience in trimester B. Um, I've put my um, contact details there. My email address is probably the best way to get um, in touch with me. So you might want to take a little note of that um, just for future reference. And there's also my web blog there as well, which I haven't updated for a little while, um, but this has given me some inspiration to maybe kick that back in again. You can go back and you can have a wee look at some of the topics and conversations that I've been having with my student groups over the last wee while. Dr Janice Spencer is the MSc programme lead. She's not with us um, today because she is on annual leave. But again, I've put her email address up here for you as well. Um, and quite often um, it, it's worth doing if you're going to contact me or you're going to contact Janice to maybe copy the other person into the email so that if I'm not picking things up, then Janice can do so. And if Janice is not picking up, then, then I can do so. Janice is much more informative in terms of programme specific information. Um, I will do my very best here today to try and give you as much information and answer any questions as I possibly can. Um, but some of the more technical modules, um, I might not be able to give you um, a sort of in-depth um, overview on that. So um, it might be worth you know, reaching out to Janice to get help and support for that. Um, 
I've put up here this slide. I'm sure that you've maybe seen this already. It is available on the university's website, but this gives you an idea of the structure of the programme. And given that you've already applied to the programme, I would imagine that you've had a good look at this. Um, we operate um, on three trimesters. This is a one year programme which begins in September, late September um, this year and will run a year hence from there. Trimester A begins in September and you have four modules that you will complete in that trimester. Um, if you want any information, you can maybe, um, we can see if we can maybe give you some, some advance reading for some of these topics, if that would be of help to you. Um, and then, so the, this trimester, as I say, runs from September through to December. You will then have examinations and coursework to complete. Examinations will be in January after the, 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 the Christmas break. And then you come back at the end of January, beginning of February, to complete trimester B. And again, you have four more modules um, that you complete then. And the exams for that are in May. So our students have just completed their examinations um, for last year. And um, we will, they are now back with us over the summer period, completing their master's project. So that's where we're currently at with um, our current cohort. Um, they are in the lab as we speak. They do an intensive um, lab-based project, uh, working with our, our academic staff and our technical teams. And the, the, the master's project, they will be assigned a supervisor and they will work very closely with that supervisor and their research team on their project. And it's one of the key strengths, I think, of the programmes here at GCU. Our class sizes are not huge. Um, this year, our master's in medical bioscience had, I think, 32 students on the programme. But we're seeing a, a bit of an influx um, from students coming onto the programme potentially for this year. And I think that we may be slightly up on that this year. We won't be hugely up on it. Um, what it means is that you get to know each other very much and very quickly on the programme because of the relatively small class sizes. You will also be split into tutorial groups, which may be even smaller than the, the, the class size. And you get to know the members of staff very quickly um, with, within the programme. And that means that you have direct access to them. There is lots of support. There is lots of help, um, not just within the, the department, but also um, in the wider GCU community. And I'm going to speak to you about that in a moment. Um, I'm not sure if there's any questions at the moment. I'm just going to double check. Um, no, I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. So I'll just um, keep going. Um, so I hope that gives you a kind of overview. You'll also see there in trimester A, there is an option to do one of two modules, either infection or, and immunity or metabolic and vascular disease. And again, you know, the, the, the programme team will give you information about each of these modules before you have to choose. So that's not something you have to choose now, but you will be given some information and guidance on which way you might want to go. And it really depends on your own background, your own research interests. One of the things that we do here at GCU is that when you come onto the master's programme, not only are you a student here within the GCU community, um, but you are on a master's programme. And what that means is that opens the door to you being part of the research community within our uh, university here. And you are going to be a researcher working within research teams. You're going to be working with a, under the supervision, as I say, of um, a member of staff. You will also have the support from an academic advisor. And that will be a person that you can touch base with throughout the year. Given that you are coming, I think, predominantly from um, international 
um, realms. You're coming from lots of different places across the, the world. We make no assumption here at GCU that you will understand and know how to operate as a student. And one of the things I would say to you, if you want to do well, if you want to succeed, and if you want to know how to operate and, and study and work here um, in your academic um, challenges that you're going to be facing, then you need to get here on time and you need to get here in advance of induction. Um, why should you come here to GCU? Because we appreciate that you have options across the globe as to where to study. Um, but you've obviously looked at GCU for various reasons. We are known as the University for the Common Good. We have a very close-knit community here at GCU. Um, we're located in the heart of Glasgow city centre. Um, you know, I can look out my window and I can see that the city centre, but I can also look out my, my office window here and actually in the distance, I can see the countryside and I can see the hills. So Glasgow is a huge city. It's probably got an excess of one million people here. Um, it's not the biggest city in the UK by any means, but it's the biggest city in Scotland. Um, but it's quite condensed. And I would probably say, you know, within 20 minutes from any part of, of Glasgow, you can be in a car on public transport and you can explore the, the beautiful countryside that exists out with um, the city. Um, we are, as I say, Scotland's largest um, city and we are one of Scotland's largest universities. But we pride ourselves on the fact that we are able to have this kind of small class sizes. We also have an open door policy, which means that students can chap on our doors. They can come past, quite often my door is wide, and I quite often have students walk past, chap the door and just say, hi Francis, or they come in and I say, have a seat, what's going on? What are you up to? How's your studies going? Can I help with anything? And quite often, they have questions that maybe they don't feel they can ask directly to a module leader or go directly to the programme leader. But we have a relationship where they'll come and know that I have, you know, that kind of level of, of being able to approach maybe um, staff to say the student's struggling or these students need extra help or support. Can we put something in place? So we do that, um, you know, um, or I, I work with you very much from induction right through. We're a really, truly cosmopolitan campus. We have students from all over the world here. Um, on our MSc programmes, we have students potentially from Nigeria. I'm just looking Pakistan, um, Hungary. Sometimes we have um, some other European students. We sometimes have home students, but these are not huge numbers. Um, the Middle East, we, we quite often have, have, have students from there, students from Ghana, um, Bangladesh, India. Um, we've had students from Thailand, Myanmar. Um, we've got a student from Canada at the moment. So they, they, they come from, from all over. Um, and I think that adds to the blend and the, the diversity, not just of the academic um, studies that you'll be doing, but just the, the, the kind of social mix within the classroom. Um, we're a really modern university campus. I think you'll like what you see when you arrive here, assuming that you, you choose to come here. We're very student focused. Um, we are what's known as a campus based university, which means that all of our buildings are all on the GCU city centre site. You're not required to travel across the city or to different campuses to get from one lecture to a tutorial or whatever. Um, most of the buildings are interlinked. So even on days where the, the Glasgow weather, which can be very changeable, is not so good, you can go internally from one building to the next, pretty much for, for most of the buildings. Um, our weather here in Glasgow is very changeable. Um, we quite often say, if you want to know what the weather's like, don't look at your app on your phone, look out the window, because you quite often can see it coming with you. But I can say today is a, a glorious day. We've had some 
beautiful weather over recent weeks in um, here in Glasgow, and it's been uh, in the mid twenties um, in terms of of temperatures. But that can be unusual. Um, I cycled in earlier on today and just before I got on my bike, the rain had started, but it was just a shower and it went off as quick as it came on. What else can I tell you about the, the department? We have quite a high employment rate from graduates from within our department, both at undergraduate and postgraduate level. Quite often our, our, our postgraduate students go on to um, maybe do PhDs. They might go on to do further study, go on to research, go into employment. Some students choose um, to, to, to stay here. Some students have got um, jobs here in the UK. Um, but obviously we've got post-study work visa now. So that gives you the opportunity to get experience and to work here within a relevant field. This is a really um, exciting and dynamic university. I think you will enjoy your time here at GCU. It's a very proactive, there are lots and lots of different options, opportunities available to you. We've got a very proactive students association. If you're sporty, if you're into clubs and societies, we've got everything imaginable here at GCU. Um, from horse riding to water polo to football, to skiing, to whitewater rafting, whatever it might be. And if there's not a club available, you can take charge of that. Contact the Students Association. There are funds available. You can set one up. A number of years ago, we had quite a big Indian contingent. And one of the girls there, she set up a Bollywood dancing a club at the Students Association. And I think it's still going now. And if you go into GCU Students Association, you can have a look at the clubs and societies available there. Um, there's a little link to YouTube here. Um, I'm not going to play this to you just now because I'm conscious that we may have some questions coming in. And I, I do want to open up the forum to you to ask me anything that you might want to do. But just to say that Scotland really is a very forward thinking, very vibrant um, country. Um, it's got easy access links and transport links um, to Europe, to across the world. You can easily explore our beautiful countryside um, and, and see parts of, of Scotland. But similarly, we're not far from London. We're not far from other major um, cities within the UK. And you can easily get to London in a day if you fly or go by train, um, which is probably more eco-friendly. Um, London is five hours by train away and it takes you straight into the heart of, of the city. And I have done London in a day. I've gone down to, to see, um, meet some, some friends and go and see a show and come back the same day. Um, so that's definitely possible. And also flying to Europe if you wanted to go and visit Paris or Rome or whatever it might be, you know, it's it's very, very easy to get relatively cheap flights to go and, and spend some time there too. Um, so what can you expect being here? There's a photograph there of one of our many end of term parties that we have. And, and we do tend to, 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 to try and make our MSCs particularly feel welcome when they arrive. So we put on lots of different activities, both with staff and students. That picture that you see there, I'm just trying to see, I think it's mostly students that are in the picture. Um, I do have another one that has, has staff as well, but these parties are not just for, for our MSC students, they're for staff too, to celebrate the achievements and the accolades of our student body um, throughout the year. GCU, as I say, is a great university. It's very diverse. It's very welcoming. There is lots of support available to you, both at a university level um, in terms of student wellbeing, but also at a programme level. Um, as I say, you know, the staff are here to help you and it's in our interest to help you to succeed. But it's a two way process. So we expect you to turn up, to be on time, to attend classes, to engage to do homework, um, to do reading, to do your research, 
and to work with each other. And peer support is a big thing as well within our groups. And quite often students will set up WhatsApp groups and they'll meet each other in the Sir Alex Ferguson library. Um, we have got pods and spaces where you can do group work and things like that as well. We're a technology enabled environment as well. So anywhere on campus, you can get Wi-Fi, you get charging points, you've got access to computers, internet, wherever you, you might be. Um, and as I say, staff are here to support you, to help you, not just within the department. We also have our Learning Development Centre where there are specialist um, support for things like um, academic writing, um, helping with your reading, IT support and anything else that you might need. You can go there to get specialist help um, with them. Um, and pretty much that's it from me. Um, I'm just looking to see how much time I've taken up, maybe 20 minutes. I'm happy to answer any other questions. So I don't know if you want to put them in the chat. If there's anything specific, anything I've not covered. Um, anything else that I can possibly tell you. Anything you want to know about Glasgow, anything about the university, anything about Scotland. What to expect when you arrive, I don't know. Francis, just to say, there's a question in the chat just now for okay. you. Okay, I've seen that one. Um, excuse me if I don't pronounce your name. Is it Ugona? Um, concerning the lab work, do we individually scout topics to work on? Or are we being given a project by prospective supervisors to work on? So in terms of the MSc research project, that's given to you and the the angle in which you will take so the lab based element of that is is done together as a group in the lab but under the supervision of an individual member of staff so everybody's projects can then go if you've got a particular project we have had in the past students who have a burning desire to do a particular project and if we can make that work you know, we, we can look in that and we have in the past had students doing their own topics, working under the supervision of uh, a member of staff in that area. Um, it really depends on student numbers. It really depends on resources and staffing. So there's lots of different factors that um, will depend on whether we can make that work. Um, so, you know, um, that is something that absolutely that you would want to maybe discuss with us um, fairly soon on um, to see if that's something that we could could accommodate or not. But as I say, it really depends on the logistics of student numbers. If we have, you know, um, you know, 40 students all wanting to do bespoke projects, that becomes tricky. Um, if we've got one or two that are very niche and we've got members of staff available to do that, that's something we can look at. Um, but generally, most of the students that are in the lab working together, working in smaller groups, but they have their own individual supervisor who will then take that lab based project into their own kind of realm. Um, I've got Hamzat who's asking how many days a week uh, are you in lectures? Um, I don't have the timetable at the moment. Um, the timetable is variable. The timetables are being put together just now. Just um, last week, staff were asked to put together the requirements for their timetables. Um, what I can do is base it on what I know from last year in terms of how much students were on campus, how many times they were in lectures and so forth. Um, things like Wednesday afternoons, we try and steer clear of. Um, because that's the, 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 the uh, Wednesday afternoons in, in Scotland are generally set aside for students to engage in student activities, clubs, societies, that kind of thing, sports activities. So a Wednesday afternoon we do try and avoid. There are occasions, however, when the timetable doesn't permit that and we have to schedule things on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, I think this year in trimester A, students weren't in on a Wednesday at all. And I think they potentially weren't on campus on a Friday at all, but they had some online work to do 
um, on a Friday. What I can say to you is we are we don't timetable. It's done centrally at the university and it's done kind of, you know, as best as they possibly can, their timetabling for across the university. You can be in between nine and six o'clock Monday to Friday, but we try and work very closely to accommodate so that you're not coming in just for one hour. So if you're having to travel to university, then it's then it's worth your while coming in. So you will have multiple classes on the same day. You study four topics um, in trimester A, and they are made up of um, tutorials, lectures, and some have practicals as well. So you're not in lectures for the entire time. Lectures tend to run for maybe an hour, two hours. We don't do any more than four hours at a time, but that would be split up into two two-hour lectures. Um, and we would give you a break in between. Um, but that's very unusual and that's only if the timetable is really pushed and we can't fit it anywhere else. So a, a lecture would probably be between an hour and two hours in length, I would say. And you would have at least one lecture per topic per week. And then you've got tutorials on top of that and practicals on top of that as well. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Anything about accommodation, one of the things that I would maybe say to you is that um, in September last year, for the cohort that arrived, not everybody had accommodation firmed up, particularly those who were travelling with children and their families, their, their partners. So they're looking for family, family accommodation. And a lot of people think that when they arrive in Glasgow, they will easily um, find accommodation. Now, that's not true. If you can try and firm up accommodation as far in advance as you possibly can, I would strongly suggest that you do that. Um, Glasgow has three universities within the city centre and another just on the outskirts. So there are four universities pretty much within a very short distance of each other with students coming from all over the world all trying to get accommodation. So... Um, I would absolutely have a look at accommodation, the issues with accommodation, get in touch with our campus life and student support about accommodation and where you can find that. There are lots of student halls very close to GCU. We have our own student accommodation, but as to the capacity of that, that's fine if you're traveling on your own, but if you're looking for family accommodation, then you're probably looking for private landlords and you, know, you may have to travel to Glasgow, you might not actually get accommodation in Glasgow. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, but obviously, the sooner you know that you're coming here, the sooner you can plan for that, and the more likely you are to be able to secure accommodation closer to the university than, than leaving it till the last minute. Um, I see Hannah is putting up any more questions to do about GC or the programme. She's also put a link up there. Um, somebody else is asking, what if a student gets sick? Is there a school clinic or how can we get to a hospital? That's a great question and it can happen. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Now, during the induction week, we have um, a, a session where they will cover for you things like the NHS, access to NHS, and how you would be able to, to, to do that. You must register with a GP when you arrive in the UK. I think there's a nominal fee you have to pay to be able to do that. Uh, I don't know exactly how much that is. I don't know, Hannah, if you have more information on that. You, we could probably Google that and we can certainly forward that on to you. But registering with a GP is really important. Students in the past, I remember during lockdown, during COVID, we had students who travelled to the UK, didn't register with a GP because obviously we were in lockdown, although it was still possible to do that, then became sick, we were really unwell and didn't know what to do. And thankfully they got in touch with me um, and we got them registered and we got them seen to. Once you're registered with a GP, it opens up access to the NHS to accident and emergency, um, should you need that. It, we also have in the UK and Scotland... Um, our pharmacies, our pharmacies have um, sort of a triage 
that you can go there. So if it's minor injuries or something that, that's easily solvable, they have clinic rooms in most pharmacies and you can go there without having to go to a GP. So, for example, if you get an eye infection or you know, you've maybe grazed, you've fallen over and you've grazed your knee, you can go to a local pharmacy and they can give you treatment there without having to go to um, hospital or to the doctor. But as I say, registering with your GP is your main point of contact. Um, as I say, there's a nominal fee for that. We'll, we'll see if we can find that out. Um, but that's basically what happens um, if you need any hospital treatment. The other thing as well is people tend not to register until they become ill. But if you become ill and you haven't registered, then you've got to register and you're thinking, but I'm I'm not feeling well. So really doing it in advance before you become ill is the way to do it. OK, so I hope hope that's answered your question. Um, OK, Hans has come back with how's the lecture schedule? Is it daily or a few days a week? I didn't hear your response as regards to that. So the lecture schedule, I don't know it because it's not been published yet, but you will get that in advance. Um, as I say, you, I, I, I don't know what it's likely to be, um, but you could be in any time between Monday to Friday from, from nine till six o'clock. Um, so I, do, I don't know what that will be yet. As soon as we have that information, hands up. I will make sure that that's put out and that you've got that information. Um, but the likelihood is it's going to be spread across the week. Um, I don't even know if I can find, if you just bear with me, I don't know if I can maybe try and see what that was um, last week, uh, last week, last year. Um, I'm just going to go on to some of the modules and see if I can get an idea. I mean, I can tell you what it is for the for my module. So I teach the M skills module, and these classes for M skills were on a Monday afternoon with the lab. So there was a practical lab, which was on a Thursday morning. Okay, so the the lecture was on a Monday between two and four. There was a tutorial Monday four to five and the lab was on a Thursday from nine till one. That's just for M skills. Um, as for other modules, I'm not entirely sure. I can't easily get in to see that, I'm afraid, at the moment. Um, I don't know if I could go into Cellcat. I'll maybe come back to that, Hamza, just in case I can try and pull that up. Um, but it's not easily accessible to me right here at the moment. And as I say, I don't have what the schedule is going to be. So that's what it was last year for M skills. Um, but I don't know what it was for the, the other um, modules. Um, OK, let's see. Yeah, I think Hannah and you're putting up some links for you to find out about registration with doctors and things like that are there. OK, um, if you can bear with me, I'm going to see if I can try and get into um, the timetable and to see if I can pull up what the timetable was like last year. I'm not entirely sure if I can get this up, but I'm just going to see if I can make that work. Do it for a programme. Sorry. Um, I'm sure I know the program code that can be difficult. Let me see. I can find. Okay, I'm going to have to go into it via a different route. Yeah, Hannah's put up any more questions. Fire in any questions. This is your opportunity to get questions answered, to make up decisions. Can I maybe ask you, how many of you have firmly accepted a place here at GCU and pretty much know this is where you want to come? 
or how many of you are still deciding? That's maybe a question for you. If you can just maybe put in the chat, that would be useful to know. Okay, somebody else has put up here. How soon can we get a CAS from GCU? Okay. Um, so is that John? John, I'm not sure where you're at in terms of the the completing the process. And I'm not sure if you have actually um firmed up your acceptance and paid your deposit. And once normally you've done that, that's when the the the, the CAS sort of kicks in. So um, if there's a problem with that and if nobody's getting back to you and it's been a while, then maybe you want to send me an email directly, John, and I can maybe chase that up for you. That's probably the best thing to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, the cast team should be in touch with you. But if if it's stuck or if it's been a while since you've heard from them, they are incredibly busy just now. If you can imagine, everybody's now at the point. Um, so you've done your deposit. OK, so the cast team will be working on that. But I will take a wee note, John, and I'll have a wee look into that and just see where we're at. and try and get a, an answer for you on that one. Okay. Okay. So some people are saying they've formally accepted and they're coming, which is great. Um, yep. Casses are pending. Uh, is it a Joya? Let's get a thumbs up. I've gotten my cast just applied for visa. That's brilliant. So there's quite a few of you are, are definitely coming, so that, that's nice to, to, to know. Are there any questions then about your arrival here, about coming to GCU, travel, anything else I can help you with? This is your opportunity. Sorry, I'm still trying to see if I can somehow find... Uh, timetable for you. I'll give you a better idea. Okay, so let's see. This trimester, I'm just having a little look. Um, so on a Monday, it looks like they had uh, what would that be? Tissue, this was trimester B. Tissue regeneration was on a Monday from nine till one. And it says that's a lecture, but I don't imagine that would be a lecture for that entire time. I'm pretty sure that would include a tutorial. Um, oncology was on a Tuesday. And again, that looks like, what's that? That's a lecture as well from 10 to 12 um, on a Tuesday. There's a tutorial for oncology from 12 to 1 and then another lecture from 1 to 2. So a Tuesday is a pretty full on day um, in trimester B. Uh, Wednesday was research skills and medical bioscience from two to four. Thursday, uh, tutorial 10 to 11 for tissue regeneration, a practical for research skills from one to five and nothing on a Friday. That was, and again, these that's not the same for every single week because if I look at the following week, there was nothing at all on the Wednesday and nothing on the Friday. So they were in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday that week. And that looks pretty much the same for most of trimester. Uh, trimester A, if 
I can find that. Let me see, go back. Um, so I've gone back as far as October. Uh, trimester A looks a bit busier. So on Mondays um, in trimester A, it looks like there were lectures from 12 till 2 for M skills and 2 till 4. I'm not sure that's that's just a one off. I don't think that's every week. Um, and a tutorial for topics in medical bioscience from 9 till 11 on a Monday. So 9 till 4 on a Monday is pretty busy. On a Tuesday lecture from 10 to 12, infection and immunity. And that depends if that's a top one that you've taken, because that's one of the optional ones. And a tutorial from 12 to 1. Again, in an Wednesday, biomolecular studies lecture from 9 to 10. And then another lecture from 12 to 1 for biomolecular studies in a Wednesday. And tutorial for biomolecular studies from 1 to 3. And then there's a practical for M skills Thursday 9 till 1 and that's all there was on a Thursday and then a tutorial from 9 till 11 on a Friday so students looked like they were in every day but not full days in trimester A certainly they're finished by 1 o'clock on a Thursday and by 11 o'clock on a Friday so I hope that's that's helpful uh, Okay, John's also saying he'd like help in renting accommodation. I can't personally help you with that, but you should have been given some information um, or you will be sent some information um, from uh, student support, I think, with regards to maybe how to go about that. So it depends on what type of accommodation you're looking for, John, whether that's um, student halls or whether you're looking for private accommodation, whether you're coming on your own, whether you're coming... Uh, with family so it's really dependent on that if you can let me know that then we can maybe see um who to put you in touch with with regards to that um okay so again there's some information there about when you arrive on campus New students have to go to the Campus Life Desk to register or pick up their student ID, having registered online. And it's got details there of where you go. That's level one of the George Moore building. Um, you need to bring your ID, your visa documents and all that kind of stuff with you as well. And there's also a link there put up about private accommodation. John, so you can, you can have a wee look at that. It's in the chat there as well that's been put up for you. Anything else? Any other? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Any other burning things that? Um, I would also, given that most of you seem to be definitely coming here, so I would really, I, I will touch base with you throughout the the summer. As I say, I am on annual leave, so I'm not here, um, the whole time. But if you copy in Jan Spencer to the email as well, one or either of us will pick that up. Um, but when you arrive, get here for induction. It's absolutely critical that you arrive here in plenty of time to settle into life here in Glasgow and to Scotland and to find your way about. Um, if you arrive late for induction, you'll not be your your head won't be in the right space to to assimilate all the information that's given to you to help you to settle. So get here in advance of induction. The induction timetable is set up to help you orientate yourself, not just to the university, but to Glasgow, to help you to understand where to find help and support. And that's before your academic studies begin. Um, induction week, if I'm right, um, begins. Let me just double check that. I'm trying to find the dates for induction. Um, it's in September. You probably have this information more to hand than I do. The induction week, I think, is the 18th to the 22nd of September. That's induction week. And teaching actually begins 
on Tuesday the 26th of September. So Tuesday the 26th of September is the first day of teaching and we expect you to be here in advance of that. And if I were you, you know, and I know that you're, you're probably working out budgets and I understand it's expensive and you want to tr try and get here, you know, with sufficient time, but, you know, it's, it's not cost effective to arrive here late because you're in complete catch up and we, we, we go at quite a pace. So it's really, really important that you arrive before teaching and probably before induction so that you can find your way about. I will certainly be here at induction. I will take you through induction. Um, we get to know each other, get to find your way about, organise some nice little events, meet the staff, meet our programme coordinators who are fundamental in terms of um, all the administration that you will that you'll need. Um, somebody's just put up, is it uh, EO? How often will we have practical classes? Um, I was having a little look at that actually earlier on today. Um, and I had a wee look at the programme handbook. Hold on, just to see if I can find it again. Uh, so I'm just having a look through the module summaries. Um, so things like in trimester A, you do biomolecular studies. Um, and it says here lectures and tutorials, but you also have practical skills. So there will be some labs for the biomolecular studies. The M skills, digital literacies and practical skills, there are labs again for that. And that's, that's normally on a Thursday between nine and 11 for the whole of trimester A. So you're in a practical class all Thursday morning. Topics in medical bioscience says here lectures and tutorials. I'm just reading through the, the blurb to see. I don't think there's any practicals there. Infection and immunity says lectures and tutorials. So I think just in, in trimester A, you have practicals for biomolecular studies and M skills. Trimester B, um, just looking, you've got research skills in medical bioscience, of which there's practical classes for that. And again, I'm pretty sure there are some practicals for some of the others, but I don't have that information in front of me. And obviously your research project is a lab-based project. So you would be in the lab for that intensely uh, for the research project. So a fair chunk of your time, and it's one of the, the key strengths, I think, of GCU is that where um, possible, you will be in a practical class learning, you know, the skills to do science. Um, I know that other courses and other universities don't have the luxury of that resource. So they maybe operate simulation. And we are very much um, fortunate that we can still offer practical sessions, lab sessions, uh, lab based projects as well. You're welcome. Um, can we have, oh, uh, sorry, can we have WhatsApp group for easy communication, exchange of ideas between the incoming students? Um, Hannah, is that something that we can help to facilitate? I'm not sure. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, yes, so I'm sure we should be able to set that up. I'm actually thinking as well that for most of our postgraduate offer holders, you should have received, um, if you've not already received it, you, you will receive it, an invite to our Facebook offer holder group um, for postgraduate students incoming in September 2023. Um, so if you've been invited to that, what I would maybe suggest is that if you want to set up a WhatsApp group, you could potentially post on that group and just ask for others who are doing the same programme as you. And then that's a good opportunity off the back of that to set up your own WhatsApp group because all of you as offer holders should be on that Facebook group or you should have received an invite to it. Um, so I would suggest if it's in your inbox, maybe just um, follow the link and accept into the group. 
um, and maybe just uh, take up the WhatsApp conversation from there. Um, we've got a similar group for undergraduate offer holders, and I've noticed that quite a lot of them are doing it for undergraduate programmes, um, setting up their own programme-specific WhatsApp groups. So it's a really good idea, um, and we try and encourage that as much as possible. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's that's great, John. Um, you know, I think touching base and getting to know each other in advance of coming kind of gives you that kind of sense of camaraderie before you even get here. And at least you're coming and you can put a face to a name once you arrive. Um, so I, I, I think that's that's fantastic. And if you if you you can do that, that would be great. Can I maybe also ask um what nationality everybody is? It's, it's quite nice to know where you're all from. I don't make any assumptions. So um, do you want to just post in the chat your nationality? That that If you're comfortable doing that, that would be great, just so that we know um, the, the, the master's programmes are, are normally a, a very culturally diverse mix, which is great. Um, I'm obviously Scottish. So I'm born and bred here. <laughs> OK. OK, so we've got quite a few Nigerians. They, we've had quite a number of Nigerians in the past. Um, we've got a big Nigerian cohort at the moment, which is great. Um, and I would imagine that you'll be from all different um, parts of Nigeria too. Which will be nice. As I say, I've had a little look to see the kind of breakdown and I don't know if we've got anybody from Pakistan on here. I know there's some Pakistani students um, who have confirmed and paid deposits. Uh, Guinean students as well. Got somebody from Hungary. Um, I don't know if any, any of those students are here just now. And, and as I say, the, yeah, I thought that different parts of Nigeria. Um, it's interesting because one of the, the topics that I do um, is that within my module is about um, telling a story about yourself and your background and just using technologies and doing research into um, kind of topics and, and students tend to, to do it on, based on their own country. And I learn so much about um the the sort of cultural mix through through these assignments um so it's great it's great to to see that and i'll maybe impart some of my knowledge of scotland and glasgow to you too when you arrive um remember that you're coming in autumn autumn september time is one of my favorite months of the year um the, the, there's still fairly good daylight at the moment here in, in Glasgow. Um, sunrise is at half past four in the morning and sunset is not until half past ten in the evening. And even at that, it doesn't really get fully dark. There's only maybe a, an hour or so, a couple of hours where it's pitch black here in Glasgow at the moment because it's, it's summertime. But in the winter that's quite different. We have very short days and very long nights. So um, unlike countries that are close to the equator, where it stays pretty static all year in terms of the amount of daylight, this is my favourite time of year um, in Scotland because we have very, very long days of daylight, which is beautiful. And we've had the most amazing sunsets recently too. Um, but there's lots to explore here. There's lots to do here in Glasgow. Um, and I'm sure that you'll settle in really well and you'll, you'll, you'll really enjoy your time here. Any other burning questions? I notice that we're kind of coming towards the last few minutes, five or six minutes left. Any other burning questions? Um, Hannah, somebody's put, please send the Facebook link to me because I am not aware of the Facebook group. I wonder if that's something that you could put up. 
Oh, no problem at all. Let me find it just now and I'll see if I can actually just post it in the webinar. Give me one minute. Thank you so much. That would be great. And again, you know, it's about going on to the, the, the university website in advance of coming just to find out. There's also um, departmental pages, school pages. So the School of Health and Life Sciences um, has every member of staff listed and some members of staff have more information than others. You can go in and have a look um, specifically within those that work in the Department of Biological and Biomedical Sciences because some of these staff members may well be teaching you um, come September. You can have a look at their profiles, their research interests, see if anything aligns with what, what you're doing, what you're interested in. You know, doing a, doing a bit of preparation in advance is definitely worth doing before you get here. It's also absolutely worth going on to our Students Association. I'm just going to get the link for that as well. Is that up for you? It's, it's definitely worth checking out. We have a very proactive um, Students Association. And I'm sure they would welcome you to join them. Let's just see. And there's, as I say, you know, your time here, whilst you're going to be coming to, to study, do your academic studies, you know, what I've tended to find is students who do more, you know, in terms of um, look at social activities and they join clubs and societies and put themselves out there and explore or whatever. They seem to be able to fit it in, juggling family life, working maybe part time um, and doing all these other activities. Generally, students who, who are doing much more tend to perform better and do well in examinations and in courseworks um, they tend to you know kind of find their feet quicker um, and get a handle on the way of life here in Glasgow and at GCU much much quicker too and I would strongly suggest that you have a look at that have a look at the Students Association there's lots of links we have a very international um, sort of governing uh, body at the moment in the Students Association in terms of the student president and the vice presidencies. I think they're all from international domains uh, this year. So there's a real representation across uh, the university in that respect. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Uh, Hannah has put up the link to the Facebook group for offer holders. I've put up a link to the Students Association. Uh, Hannah, I believe this has been recorded. The slides, will they be made available to students so that they've got my email address and Janice's email address and things like that? Absolutely. So we have recorded this session, so I'll be able to send that out to all of the attendees and anyone who wasn't able to make it today. Um, so yes, thank you so much to everyone for attending and thank you, Francis, for a very informative session. I hope you all find it really, really useful. Um, and yes, as Frances says, any further questions, she's happy for you to contact her directly. Um, and we'll have all the email addresses within the link, within the, the presentation slides. Um, also feel free to contact um, studentenquiries at gcu.ac.uk as well. I'm just adding a link about that just now. Um, if you've got any queries that are relating to more generic GCU um, information, please feel free to get in touch with us, with us that way as well. Um, but yes, just a quick sign off from me. Thank you so much for attending. It's been really useful and lovely to e meet you all and hopefully yes. see you in September. Yeah, fingers crossed. That would be great. Can I just say as much as I'm saying I am contactable, I'm about to go on annual leave. So don't panic if I don't get back to you right away. It's my priority on my return to make sure that I, I get on top of anything. I'm here today and part of tomorrow. So if there's anything burning that you have, 
contact me and I will action it before I go away on holiday. I'm going for three weeks. I'm back on Friday the 21st of July. I will endeavour to cover everything from there. I'm in and out the office um, most of the summer and I've got other annual leave to take. But anything that I can action, I will forward on. I will always touch base with you and just make sure that if you don't hear from me for the next three weeks, the problem is I'm probably in Europe somewhere without internet. So don't don't worry about it. I promise you, I will definitely get back to you. But Hannah has put up there, there's always inquiries at GCU that you can get in touch with if you can't get hold of myself or, or, or Janice. And inquiries will always endeavour to get somebody from the department to, to answer you. All right. Just to sign off from me as well, just to say thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for all your really relevant and pertinent questions. I think that's been really helpful um, and hope to see you all in September. Take care. Bye bye.